Welcome to part 4 of our Dodger game tutorial. So, what I've done so far is this. A game where you just show this and just press play. Then, I'll show the ready thing and all these squares will come out. And when you hit them, you die. So now, we don't think that one stitch would really be enough for a dodger, a proper dodger game. So, let's say for our next stage, we'll have a cannon in the middle and we can't shooting, 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 shooting stuff. So that, um, so that when you touch the bullet, you die. So, first we create a new sprite. And and excuse me for that, but I'm sorry, a hunt. So I'm going to draw a cannon. Hana. All right, so this shall be my cannon. And after that, uh, oops, a daisy. We shall also have a bullet. Now, coding time. So, we all want the stage number to change to two when stage one is over, right? So we can put, wait, 21 seconds because of the, don't forget to pay into account the ready go timing. Then go to variables, set stage number to two. Eh. Okay. Now, we only want the squares to spawn only at stage 1. So, we bring in... Eh, what's this here? Oh, never mind. Because I... Yep. Oh, never mind. So, I take a if-then block. Place it here. And I put stage number equals 1 in here. Do the same for all the other 4. Alright, so these guys will only spawn at stage 1, but the problem is the cannon is still showing. Okay, but first you, I actually drew my cannon a little too small, so, oh. so we um, changed the size to let's just say 200, no, um, 300, alright. Now this will be our cannon, and maybe let's also have a big... Okay, maybe not so big. Alright. First, we make sure that the cannon only shows... Only shows when... Uh, only shows when you 
only shows when the stage is two. So we place an if then else block. Then after that, place an equal operator and place a two. Then go to variable and put stage number. So it's like if this condition is true, do this. Otherwise, do this. So if the stage number is two, we show. Otherwise, we make it hide. All right. And okay, okay. For now, I'll just do a minor de um a minor debug. To just to do the debug, you can actually just put this, like remove the show thing from the when I receive um event block. stage two is coming yep okay everything worked out well now we just have to make this point towards our character but we do not put point towards mouse pointer you know why I'll explain so when we start the game Okay, I may need to uh, take some while to actually get past this whole thing. Okay, never mind. Let's just do a short debug, and I'll show you. Hold on a minute. Well, actually, I draw, drew it the wrong way. It's actually uh, not supposed to be up there. But, okay, let's just quickly correct it over. Okay. On, um... On a sec. Um. On just um. Sorry. On. Uh, okay. So, if we make it pointing, so first, if we actually make it um okay, let let's do the debug thing first. If I actually make it go to point towards sprite one, even if my pointer's off the screen, okay, but but then um it's from follow lah. But if you actually just do this script alone. You actually just see that it points towards this. So people could just cheat like this if you actually swap it to mouse pointer. So like, hey, got mode. I mean, not okay, not got mode. Hacker mode. Shooting this, shooting this way. But I'm over here. Ah, <laughs> yep. That's why we make it go to. I mean, point towards sprite, sprite one. Now, the bullet. Remember what I talked about in the previous two or three um, parts? Yep, it's a cloning. First, we actually make it go not to a random position unless you want it to just scatter or scatter all around the screen. Whoops, the screen. Then go ahead, just put go to a random position because and it's not my choice. It's not my game. So any problems with the game? Your fault for not not following through. You can see it will actually come going to the to that sprite.
Now we use an if then else block. If then, actually, no, you don't need to use if then else. If then, stage number equals to two, then wait for, let's just say, a quarter of a second before it, it clones itself. When it starts to clone, point towards sprite one. So these two will be pointing in the same direction. Uh, but you'll just point towards the sprite though. Just don't forget. Repeat until touching edge. Move 10 steps. Um. Okay, maybe let's make it fire faster. Now that delete this clone. Then can drag out another of these events. and place a forever loop. Okay, so this is actually just like when green flag clicked, but it's for the clone. Forever, if then, it touches the player, which just basically means the player died. Ah, you died. Oh, uh, game has started. But, First, we need this thing to hide, cause it's like, oh, hello, 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 hello. Hello, I'm here. I know, I mean, unless you'd like to have an awkward pink dot in the middle of nowhere, just leave it there, but if you want it not to be there, place the hide script here, so that when it starts, it'll hide, and show so that when it clones, it'll show. And let's try it out. Okay, maybe let's do a debug. Hey. Excuse me. And as you can see, it'll also say that you died, but uh, it looks so awkward. With this thing showing when you died. So you can say that when the cannon receives you died, it can just hide. So let's do another debug. Debug 6000. <laughs> I mean, lame, right? Okay. And as you can see, it works. I mean, I understand over here, this looks really awkward, but maybe I'll explain that in part, like, I mean, fix that in part 5. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you like it, leave a dislike if you don't like it, and of course, maybe place your feedback in the comments below and say, and subscribe. If you if you like and don't forget to press the bell button so stay tuned for more tutorials